Chapter 1. Learning how to make who decisions will help you make more money and grow your business. In the business world today, who is your number one problem, not what. What refers to strategies you choose, the products and services you sell, and the processes you use. You can spend your whole career chasing solutions to the million what problems plaguing your business. That is what most managers do. Unfortunately, focusing solely on what means you will continue to feel stressed, make less money than you desire, and lack time to do what you want. Or you can decide today to focus on the who. The most important decisions that business people make are not what decisions, but who decisions. Jim Collins Who refers to the people you put in place to make the what decisions. Who is running your sales force? Who is assembling your product? Who is where the magic begins or where the problem starts? Many employees end up being fundamentally unsuited for the jobs for which they are hired. Mishired employees create problems and make it impossible for their employers to get away from the office. Ultimately, who failures infect every aspect of your professional and personal lives. More than 20 business billionaires, mostly self-made, have contributed to this summary's insights and experiences, an unprecedented assemblage. Jeff Smart and Randy Street conducted a lot of interviews and countless additional hours of analysis for this project. The success of your business is simply the result of how good you are at hiring the people around you. Out of this mountain of research, four parts of the hiring process were identified where failure typically occurs. It does not matter whether a person is being hired as a call center worker or the CEO of a $50 billion financial services institution. Who mistakes happen when managers are unclear about what is needed in a job, have a weak flow of candidates, do not trust their ability to pick out the right candidate from a group of similar-looking candidates, lose candidates they want to join their team. Who problems are preventable, and the purpose of this summary is to give you a solution to your number one problem and help you make significant decisions. Decide to make better who decisions and you will enjoy your career more, make more money, and have more time for the relationships that matter most. Did you know, according to studies, the average hiring mistake costs 15 times an employee's base salary in hard costs and productivity loss. A single hiring blunder on a $100,000 employee can cost a company $1.5 million. If your business is making 10 such mistakes a year, it's pouring $15 million down the drain annually. Chapter 2 Finding the right who for whatever position needs filling is not voodoo. Virtually every manager struggles to find and hire the talent necessary to drive his or her business forward. We've all been there. We've all heard the horror stories of the CEO who sank a multi-billion dollar public company. The district manager who allowed his region to fall behind the competition. Even the executive assistant who couldn't keep a schedule. Most people have lived those stories and could add dozens more to the list. Sometimes employers let their guards down. They realize how inflated resumes can be. Yet, they accept at face value claims of high accomplishment that they know better than to trust fully. Due diligence takes time, and time is the one commodity most lacking in busy managers' lives. One of the hardest challenges is to hire people from outside the company, and one of the fundamental failures in the hiring process is a resume. A resume is a record of a person's career with all of the accomplishments embellished and all the failures removed. Jay Jordan, CEO of the Jordan Company, explained how he once hired a candidate who looked great on paper but failed in the role. The executive demanded some feedback from Jordan on the day of his termination. Jordan didn't want to add insult to injury but finally couldn't stop himself from saying, Look, I hired your resume, but unfortunately, what I got was you. The techniques in this summary will help everyone boards and hiring managers at every level, even parents hiring a nanny. Find the right who for whatever position needs filling. The A method will do the due diligence for you. It lets you focus on the individual candidates without losing sight of your organization's goals and values. However, you have to break some bad hiring habits of your own. Voodoo hiring. Executives who are talented in so many ways have trouble finding the right people for their teams. Steve Kerr, the legendary management expert who built Crotonville for Jack Welch at GE and who most recently served as managing director and chief learning officer at Goldman Sachs, has a simple answer. Otherwise smart people struggle to hire strangers. People unfamiliar with great hiring methods consider the process a mysterious black art. Voodoo 
hiring is some of the wrong hiring methods that some employers have used, which failed. Did you know? In an October 2006 cover story, The Search for Talent, The Economist reported that finding the right people is the single biggest problem in business today. Chapter 3. Voodoo Hiring Methods Causes You to Hire the Wrong Person In an age where every other management process has been studied and codified, it is still amazing that people still view hiring as the process where building an organization begins as something that resists an orderly approach. Managers cling to their favorite methods even when evidence suggests they don't work. If you find yourself wondering how a misfit got on your payroll, you probably used one of the voodoo hiring methods. The art critic. When it comes to judging art, going on gut instinct sometimes works just fine. A good art critic can make an accurate appraisal of a painting within minutes. With executive hiring, though, people who think they are naturally equipped to read people on the fly are setting themselves up to be fooled big time. Gut instinct is inaccurate when it comes to hiring someone. If you extend an offer based on a good gut feeling, you will have a stomach ache. The sponge. A common approach among busy managers is to let everybody interview a candidate. The goal of this sponge-like behavior is to soak up information by spending as much time with people as possible. Unfortunately, managers rarely coordinate their efforts, leaving everybody to ask the same superficial questions. The sponge's final assessment of the person he hires rarely goes more profound than he's a good guy. The prosecutor. Many managers act like the prosecutors they see on TV. They aggressively question candidates, attempting to trip them up with trick questions and logic problems. One employer is said to always ask candidates if they play chess. If they say yes, he matches them against an employee who happens to be a Russian chess master. In the end, trick questions might land you the most knowledgeable candidate, and maybe even someone who can beat a Russian chess master. But knowledge and ability to do the job are not the same. The suitor. Rather than rigorously interviewing a candidate, some managers spend all of their energy selling the applicant on the opportunity. Suitors are more concerned with impressing the candidates than assessing their capabilities. They spend all their time in an interview talking and virtually no time listening. Did you know, Adam Myers, chief executive for the Health Optics and Photonics Division of Helma PLC, said at first his team didn't pay much attention to the screening interview and they wasted a lot of time. Myers encouraged his team to screen more aggressively. Today, only 10 to 20% of the people they talk to on the phone pass their rigorous screening interview. Chapter 4. Voodoo Hiring Methods Employers and Interviewers Should Avoid The Trickster Tricksters are the interviewers who use gimmicks to test for certain behaviors. They might throw a wad of paper on the floor, for example, to see if a candidate is willing to clean it up or take him to a party to see how he interacts with other partygoers. One of the painful truths of hiring is this. It is hard to see people for who they are. The animal lover. Many managers hold on stubbornly to their favorite pet questions, questions they think will reveal something uniquely crucial about a candidate. The chatterbox. This technique has a lot in common with the la-di-da interview. The conversation usually goes something like this. How about them Yankees? Man, the weather is rough this time of year. You grew up in California? So did I. Although enjoyable, this method does nothing to help you make the right decision. It is a cognitive trap. Finding an A player. A clear and tested path leads the way out of a hiring mess. Finding an A player begins with setting the bar higher. What is an A player? He or she is not just a superstar. Think of an A player as the right superstar, a talented person who can do the job you need while fitting in with your company's culture. An A player is defined this way. A candidate who has at least a 90% chance of achieving a set of outcomes that only the top 10% of possible candidates could achieve. You need to hire people who have at least a 90% chance of succeeding in the role you have defined. This may take longer, but it will save you serious time and money down the road. An A player not only has a 90% chance of achieving the job, but he or she also accomplishes what only 10% of possible hires could achieve. Ken Griffin is a living proof of the value of hiring A players. Griffin is the founder and CEO of Citadel, one of the world's most successful hedge funds, with over $20 billion in managed assets and trading activity across all of its businesses that top 500 million shares a day, nearly 10% of the total United States equity volume. Chapter 5. 
qualities of an A player and how to make them work for you. Hiring A players takes hard work. You have to dig hard, ask tough questions, and be prepared sometimes for disturbing answers. Using the A method, you can discern A players and how to manage them. Asking the right questions before you bring on your next employee can have a successful business effect. The four steps in using the A methods are scorecard. The scorecard is a document that describes exactly what you want a person to accomplish in a role. It is not a job description, but rather a set of outcomes and competencies that define a job done well. By defining A performance for a role, the scorecard gives you a clear picture of what the person you seek needs to accomplish. Scorecards describe the mission for the position, outcomes that must be accomplished, and competencies that fit the company's culture and the role. You wouldn't think of having someone build you a house without an architect's blueprint in hand. Don't think of hiring people for your team without this blueprint by your side. The scorecard is composed of three parts, the job's mission, outcomes, and competencies. Together, these three pieces describe A performance in the role, what a person must accomplish, and how. They provide a clear linkage between the people you hire and your strategy. The mission. The mission is an executive summary of the job's core purpose. It boils the job down to the essence, so everybody understands why you need to hire someone into the slot. You'll know you have a good mission when candidates, recruiters, and even others from your team understand what you are looking for without asking clarifying questions. For a mission to be meaningful, it has to be written in plain language. Outcomes. Outcomes describe what a person needs to accomplish in a role. Most of the jobs we hire have three to eight outcomes, ranked by order of importance. Outcomes are clear, and most A players can achieve them. For instance, grow revenue from $25 million to $50 million by the end of the year. Competencies. The third part of a scorecard, competencies, flow directly from the first two elements of the scorecard. The mission defines the essence of the job to a high degree of specificity. Outcomes describe what must be accomplished. Competencies define how you expect a new hire to operate in the fulfillment of the job and the achievement of the outcomes. Did you know, Alec Gores, the founder and chairman of the Gores Group, a private equity firm based in Los Angeles, has created over the past 20 years over $1 billion in value while losing only $2 million in the process. A truly astonishing record. Gores learned to rely on people with job-specific talents, rather than gunning for all-around athletes. Chapter 6. These are the critical competencies that make A players stand out and how to source them. Efficiency. Honesty slash integrity. Does not cut corners ethically. Earns trust and maintains confidence. Does what is right, not just what is politically expedient. He or she speaks plainly and truthfully. Organization and planning. Aggressiveness. Moves quickly and takes a forceful stand without being overly abrasive. Follow through on commitments. Intelligence. Learns quickly. Demonstrates the ability to speedily and proficiently understand and absorb new information. Analytical skills. Able to structure and process qualitative or quantitative data and draw insightful conclusions from it. Exhibits a probing mind and achieves penetrating insights. Attention to detail. Does not let important details slip through the cracks or derail a project. Persistence. Demonstrates tenacity and willingness to go the distance to get something done. Proactivity. Acts without being told what to do. He or she brings new ideas to the company. Scorecards are the guardians of your culture. The beauty of scorecards is that they are not just documents used in hiring. They become the blueprint that links the theory of strategy to the reality of execution. Finding great people is getting harder, but it is not impossible. Systematic sourcing before you have slots to fill ensures you have high-quality candidates waiting when you need them. Getting great candidates does not happen without significant effort. The CEOs of billion-dollar companies recognize recruitment as one of their most important jobs. These successful executives don't allow recruiting to become a one-time event or something that they have to do only now and then. They are always sourcing, always on the lookout for new talent, consistently identifying the who before a new hire is needed. How to source. Referrals from your professional and personal networks. Referrals from your employees. Deputizing friends of the firm. Hiring recruiters. Hiring researchers. Sourcing systems. Of all the ways to source candidates, the number one method is to ask for referrals from your personal and professional networks. This approach may feel scary and time-consuming, 
but it is the single most effective way to find potential A players. Did you know, when Mark Gallagher and Jeff Aronson co-founded Centerbridge Partners in 2007, they raised the largest first-time buyout fund in history, $3.2 billion. Even more impressive, more than 90% of the people they hired to manage this massive fund proved to be A players. Chapter 7. Select A players through a series of interviews to provide the facts you need to rate a person against the scorecard. The best and surest way we have found to select A players is through a series of four interviews that build on each other. The four interviews are the screening interview. The screening interview is a short, phone-based interview designed to clear out B and C players from your roster of candidates. Four essential questions will help you build a comprehensive fact base for weeding out clear B and C players in a screening interview. The questions are, what are your career goals? What are you good at professionally? What are you not good at or not interested in doing professionally? The Who Interview The Who Interview is a chronological walkthrough of a person's career. You ask five simple questions for each job in the past 15 years, beginning with the earliest and working your way forward to the present day. The questions are, what were you hired to do? What accomplishments are you most proud of? What were some of the low points during that job? Who are the people you worked with? Why did you leave that job? People who perform poorly are often pushed out of their jobs. Do not hire anybody who has been pushed out of 20% or more of their careers. The Focused Interview the WHO interview is comprehensive and will get you most of the way toward the right answer of who to hire. Questions asked during focused interviews are, The purpose of this interview is to talk about, fill in the blank with a specific outcome or competence, such as the person's experience selling to new customers. What are your most significant accomplishments in this area during your career? What are your insights into your biggest mistakes and lessons learned in this area? The reference interview. You may be tempted to skip reference checks and make an offer now. However, don't skip the references. Don't just use the reference list the candidate gives you. Ask the candidate to contact the references to set up the calls. Reference interview helps you to avoid hiring somebody who lies. In the A method, five simple questions are asked during the reference interview. In what context did you work with the person? What were the person's biggest strengths? What were the person's most areas for improvement back then? How would you rate his or her overall performance in that job on a 1 to 10 scale? What about his or her performance causes you to give that rating? The person mentioned that he or she struggled with some things in the job. Can you tell me more about that? A positive reference will brim with tremendous enthusiasm and evident admiration. The reference's belief in the former colleague will come through in how he or she talks about the person. Did you know? According to Marshall Goldsmith's behavioral warning signs, Candidates who need to win to an unhealthy extent will be battling you and your colleagues over petty things in the long run. Chapter 8. Sell your candidate to seal the hiring deal. Imagine putting all of that work into finding Mr. or Mrs. Wright and then losing them in the 11th hour. Imagine the frustration, the embarrassment, the anxiety. Don't fumble the ball as you run across the goal line. You are not finished until your candidate becomes an employee. Sell is the fourth and final step in the A method for hiring. The key to successfully selling your candidate to join your company is putting yourself in his or her shoes. Care about what they care about. It turns out that candidates tend to care about five things. So make sure that you address each of these five areas until you get the person to sign on the dotted line. The five areas are called the five F's of selling, and they are fit, family, freedom, fortune, and fun. Fit ties together the company's vision, needs, and culture with the candidate's goals, strengths, and values. Family takes into account the broader trauma of changing jobs. Freedom is the autonomy the candidate will have to make his or her decisions. Fortune reflects the stability of your company and the overall financial upside. Fun describes the work environment and personal relationships the candidate will make. Fit means showing the candidate how his or her goals, talents, and values fit into your vision, strategy, and culture. Selling is something you should be doing throughout the entire hiring process. Like sourcing, selling requires constant attention. There are five distinct phases of the hiring process that merit increased selling effort on your part. Think of these as waves to overcome. If you don't increase your sales energy, you won't get your candidate over the crest of the wave to the next phase. 
the waves are when you source, when you interview, the time between your offer and the candidate's acceptance, the time between the candidate's acceptance and his or her first day, the new hire's first 100 days on the job. Great leaders are persistent. They don't take the first no for an answer. They keep positive pressure on the A players they want until they get them. Once you identify people you want on your team through selection, you need to persuade them to join. Selling the right way ensures you avoid the biggest pitfalls that cause the very people you want the most to take their talents elsewhere. It also protects you from the biggest heartbreak of all, losing the perfect candidate at the 11th hour. A method energizes the company and leads to positive things. It also contains the key to greater financial success and more personal and career satisfaction. Did you know? Sir Terry Lehi, Fortune Magazine's 2003 European Business Leader of the Year, started out as a shelf stocker at Tesco and rose to become its CEO. Conclusion More than 400 CEOs, business billionaires, and other successful leaders and investors have participated in the research to create WHO. These captains of industry have spent their lifetime in the trenches, making businesses grow. They know where the biggest problems can be found and the greatest opportunities lie. Whether you're a board of directors looking for a new CEO, the owner of a small business searching for the right people to make your company grow, or a parent in need of a new babysitter, it's all about who. Avoid common voodoo hiring methods. Define the outcomes you seek. Generate a flow of A players to your team by implementing the A method. Ask the right interview questions to improve your ability to quickly distinguish an A player from a B or C candidate and attract the person you want to hire by emphasizing the points the candidate cares about most. Hire the best person and watch your business, your organization, and your home flourish. If you are hiring a recruiter, take the time to educate her. Make sure she understands your needs and culture and don't miss the opportunity to learn from her. Source from everywhere you can, including the board's network, and stay engaged. If you don't own the process, no one will. Talent is what you need. Focus and commitment will get you there. Try this. Hire A players for your business or organization. Create a list of the 10 most talented people you know and commit to speaking with at least one of them per week for the next 10 weeks. At the end of each conversation, ask, who are the most talented people you know? Get new names, continue to build your list, and continue to talk with at least one person per week.